Good evening. Happy Monday as I record this. It is, what's today's date? It is January 29th. I can't believe I'm saying that. I can't believe we are almost through the uh, first month of the new year. But happy, happy Monday. If you can share this, and I don't know if I can actually share this under this new configuration with um, live stream. So I'm going to do my darndest to actually do it uh, the best way I know how by taking just a few seconds to actually do it uh, on the back end of my Facebook page in a different browser. So give me two seconds to do this and hopefully we can rock and roll and get started. <clears throat> Uh, come on over. I really need an assistant to uh, <laughs> to do this for me. Okay. All right. So um, let's do this. So I'm going to move that over here. Okay. So if you're joining me for the very first time, my name is Erica Kastner. Avi, because we are actually in the Erica Kastner page, and I am a business and breakthrough coach that helps business owners, service providers, sales professionals gain more visibility in the market space, especially helping them identify the key partnerships and uh, ways to be more productive in their market space. So today, I wanted to just chime in because, and I do have some notes, I have some things that I wanted to share with you all today. So if I'm looking down, uh, don't freak out, I'm just referring to my notes, that way we stay on track. Uh, I wanted to just kind of come in here for about 20, 25 minutes. Let's see if I can actually stay the course. I also wanted to just kind of really quick before we get started, like, thank you, thank you, thank you for being so patient with me. I was actually down for about a week and a half with a significant cold. So if I've been like MIA in social media land, it is because um, some of the content that I had actually produced uh, wasn't able to get me through uh, the whole we the whole time that I was um, sick. So I just wanted to thank you for being patient. And, and if you were wondering what the heck happened to me, well, that was what happened to me. I was uh, at one point I couldn't even speak <laughs> because I was just coughing so much. So uh, tis the season, right? Okay, <clears throat> so let's get into it. So tonight. I wanted to just kind of talk about the some of the conversations that I've been having uh, in this past, actually, believe it or not, on this last week. Um, I did bounce back last week, so I did have some opportunity to go out there in the market uh, and, and, and visit some other organizations and talk to other people that I'm not used to talking to. And the whole visibility aspect or positioning people, you know, like people asking about advice on how to position themselves in the market space a little more strategically than they had. Maybe they had, uh, like in, in, in one instance, they had a lot of people that were, or it, it, I'm sorry, in several instances, I digress. There were people that were like, okay, I set out to do these incredible things, these epic things in 2018 to amp up my visibility, to get in front of my target audience, to talk about things that like offer products and services that, you know, maybe they hadn't in the past or they had kind of fallen off the grid with those products and services. And they wanted to resurrect some of those efforts in 2018, but they were finding that, you know, the same old, same old was going on and that, you know, some of the bad habits that were happening in 2017 or in the past uh, were showing up even though the clock struck midnight on, on uh, you know, January 1st, 2018, it was like they weren't able to break some of those habits. So although we're not going to be able to break maybe some bad habits, I do want to shed some light on some things to perhaps streamline your efforts as it relates to you getting more visible in your industry. Now, I've always been known, I, I would hope that I've been known, if you've been following me for any amount of time, that, that some of the pillars that I speak to are helping people identify the key partnerships that are going to prefer the more business. That's pillar number one. Pillar number two is in expanding your presence beyond like your typical target market, you know, finding ways to expand your presence um, inside and beyond your market space. And then last but not least, being more productive in your workspace. So if you run a team, if you run an organization, if you sit on a board, if you 
are in a position, a leadership position in general, and you're wanting to be more productive with your efforts, then hopefully in the past you've gotten some sort of content from me that's allowed you to um, work through you know, your presence, your partnerships, and your um, productivity. Tonight, though, I want to really talk about this whole visibility aspect because, again, you know, going back to some of the conversations I've had earlier, um, some of the goals that the people that I've been chatting with that they set for in 2018, they're falling by the wayside. It's already, you know, we're 28 days into the new year, and I want to help you all out. Now, if you are in this boat, um, perfect, you're in the right spot. If you're not currently in this point, in this boat right now, chances are at some point in the this year, maybe even the next 30, 60, 90 days, <clears throat> let me say that again, in the next 30, 60, or 90 days, you may be in a slump. You may be in a situation where you're, um, you're not making the traction that you hope to make. So I, I want to rattle off a few things. Like I said, I have notes. Um, and if somebody could, um, hey, Fernando, how are you? Um, and you and I have to connect, my friend, because um, like I said, I was terribly sick and we got to get back on track with, um, because I owe you a phone call. So um, so make sure that you private message me or at least email me so we can get back on to each other's schedule. Okay. So if for some reason, like if you're chiming, in, if you're chiming in here live, let me know that you are because I, I do want to make this interactive tonight. I don't want this to be all about my points. Uh, I certainly want to share value, but I also want to make sure that if you have specific questions as it relates to your own visibility <clears throat> in the market space, <coughs> that nasty cough is coming back on some level. Mm. Okay. I do have water and tea here, so hopefully that will be will we be able to sustain us <laughs> through the night. Okay, so let's dive right into it. Um, and if somebody could help a sister out and put um, maybe some of these points in the comment section as I rattle them off, because I cannot talk and chew gum at the same time. So if you guys could be super helpful, I just need one volunteer to uh, be my scribe tonight and put these, these tips inside the comment section. That way we have some discussion around it. Okay, let's get into it. Number one, we have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, if we want more visibility in our market space, we've got to identify our target market. Now, I know that if you've followed me at all, or if you've been around in any um, branding or, or visibility space, like if you followed other people that kind of speak to that, uh, you might've heard that, that phrase before. But this is what I mean by this. So there are so many service providers that I work with right now or CEOs of organizations and their product and service serves a number of industries or it might fall into um, a number of target markets that they might be able to serve with that particular service, that product and whatnot, okay? So if you are struggling with this right now, if you're struggling to get traction or visibility in your current field, my high, high, high recommendation is to think about, okay, ultimately, if I were to wake up every single day and I were to service a particular clientele, a maybe you have something that kind of serves the B2B market. If I'm in that situation where my product or service is speaking to a specific industry, a specific niche, what is it specifically not like this general blanket statement now it doesn't mean that you can't have multiple target markets what this does mean though is if you're struggling with this right now is that you want to make sure that you're identifying the people or the industries or the the types of um, people you want to serve so identifying your target market and getting very specific about who that person is who they represent what are their idiosyncrasies what are their um what really makes them up and if you are in a situation where there is a ton of them so like um I was talking to um, a wealth advisor the other day and then this person was actually he was talking about how um, you know he wants to service people that are young professionals great okay but what's your subcategory within those specific, like that specific industry or that specific grouping of people, right? Because young professionals by default 
is a huge category. It's not necessarily something we can segment out by, by just saying young professionals. Like, do we want to say young professionals with kids? Do we want to say young professionals that have no kids? Do we want to say young professionals that have uh, both working, like maybe they're married young professionals and both people are working? Like, so get very specific about like you can like generalize the subgroup or generalize the group of people. However, create an identity for those people. Get very specific about who it is that you serve. Um, number two, who's already talking to those people? Now, I have talked to people before, and and I, when I bring this up to them, when I say, okay, number one, you've got to identify your target market. Number two, who is already talking to those people? People get all bit jiggity with me and they say, well, who the hell cares about like who's talking to them already? Okay, let me break it to you down, like break it down like this. Would you, if I were to ask you, would you prefer to, number one, like go find a hundred customers and this may or may not make sense to some of you. Like maybe a hundred customers is like way too many customers or service, but for the night, for the, the sake of nice round numbers, I'm going to, to, to say it like this. Would you rather go out there and try to find a hundred customers by yourself? Or would you rather go out there and establish relationships with five people that are talking to 20 of your clients, 20 different clients? to still make up the hundred like customers. What would you rather do? Chase the hundred yourself or go establish relationships with five people that are already talking to your customers. Um, thank you, Fernando. I really appreciate you chiming in and sharing those, um, the, my, my points into the comment section. Most of you are probably logically are going to say that you would rather build five relations or, you know, establish relationships with five people so you can potentially get in front of 20 of the people that they're already talking to. So in turn, that would give you maybe some access or some lead opportunities to talk to um, their clientele. It is so much easier for you to go out there, believe it or not, to build referral relationships with people. And I don't want to talk about this today because it, I think it'll kind of mince the message for tonight because I want to give this high level view. But I want to be sure that when you're going out there and establishing those um people that are already talking to your customers, what can you do to provide value back to those people? So what can you do to mutually add some value to what's going on in their world? Because if you're just expecting that they're gonna refer you business, but then you have nothing else to give or nothing else to support, um, then you know it's gonna be a little lopsided and it's not necessarily going to pan out in your favor. It might up front, but in the long run, it's not necessarily going to pan out in your favor. Okay, number three. So now that you establish who your target market is, who's already talking to those people, um, or talking, you know, like talking to that target market, um, where are those people hanging out? So let me go back to, I'm going to actually bounce around to different scenarios because I think that um, if you're catching this in the replay mode, if you're catching this live with me, um, not every one of my clients are in the financial wealth space. I mean, I have clients that are in the realty space. I have clients that are in the um, mortgage and banking space. I have clients that are those C-level executives who have a team, you know, but they have a service that they provide. So they do have a team and they're trying to leverage their efforts in their team. But if we're going to keep this strictly in expanding your presence and expanding your visibility, um, let me give this example. So if you were an insurance agent, let's say, okay, well, like it might make sense for you to align yourself with other realtors or other financial wealth advisors or CPAs or maybe attorneys, right? So I'd be thinking about, well, like where the heck are those people hanging out? Where are they all congregating? So if we were going to look at attorneys, for instance, because that was one of the industries I rattled off, if you're an insurance agent, and an attorney would be a good referral source for you. And knowing what you know about referral sources, like you could mutually be a, a benefit to them as well too. I'd be joining organizations or getting involved with organizations like the Bar Association, right? And now every county is going to have a different Bar Association. Not all of them are created equal. 
but I'd be thinking about maybe there's a young professionals like lawyer association. Um, I know my husband who's in the insurance space. It's probably why I gravitated toward this this uh, this example. Um, you know, he's actually very much part of the sports and entertainment industry. So there is actually an organization for sports and entertainment lawyers. So guess where he's hanging out? Guess where he's spending a lot of his time in with or within those organizations, right? So for you specifically, think about, okay, I know my target market. I know who's already talking to them. Now, where are those people hanging out? Not the clients, okay? Remember, you want to talk to the people that are already talking to your clients. You want to get to know those people. Okay. Um, and thanks again, Fernando, for putting that in there. Number four. I can't believe I'm moving through this as fast as I thought. Okay, perfect. Number four, <clears throat> what can you do? And I, I actually kind of slipped this in already, but what can you do to add value to their life? So is there a way that you can either, um, I'm trying to think, because like, here's the deal. For a lot of um, like like financial institutions, so the, the wealth advisors, the bankers, insurance agents like you're going to be you have some like interesting compliance laws well realtors do too but um you all have some very interesting compliance laws that you've got to work around however i know that if you're in one of those industries you are or a lot of a lot of the people i speak to that are in those industries and i'm not going to point any um anybody out on this live stream or potentially watching the replay but I know generally financial wealth advisors, insurance agents, bankers, realtors, attorneys, CPAs, you were all in a position to go out there and you want to speak. You want to provide some sort of information to your clients, your potential clients, your potential referral sources. Like you want to go do more of those, those things. If you don't want to speak, if you don't want to educate, you probably want to consider getting the hell out of that industry because you are in a service sales industry. And so, <laughs> hello, like that's part of the shtick, right? Like educating people, training people, um, providing some sort of educational platform for these people to engage in um, valuable information that's going to help them make decisions on whether or not they utilize you or the next guy or the next gal for their product or service. So I'd be thinking about like, what is it that I, like if, if I were you, I'd be thinking about how can I add value to the people that are potentially going to refer me business? Do I have a blog that I can like get guest input on? Do I have a podcast that I, you know, like speak on? Or maybe, maybe you don't even host the podcast, but maybe you've been a guest on a podcast. Um, and I'm saying podcast because like podcasts, there's so many people that are out there starting podcasts and guesting on podcasts. But if you're not currently doing that, like it's a very cool way for you to for free get your message out there and not a pitch by any stretch of imagination, but share valuable resources with different audiences. So if you're not currently podcasting and speaking on other people's platforms, whether it's speaking at other people's events, whether it's guest blogging, whether it's, um, you know, like I said, getting on a podcast into your radio show, a television show, like whatever, like you've got to figure out a way to get more visible on those platforms. But if you can't personally provide value to them, so like if you don't have a podcast or a blog, can you point them in the right direction of somebody else? Right now, like there's a, a podcasting service and I use this a lot because I mean, I like I don't have to freaking do it. And it's not that I don't want to work because I, I love working um, and connecting the dots for people. But if there is a way that I can like obviously leverage my efforts, I'm like, heck yeah, let's do that. So there's a gentleman that actually has, hey, Nicole, how are you? There's actually a gentleman um, that actually has a list of people that want to be a guest on podcast. And he also has on the same email, he has a, a list of people that uh, need guests for their show. So anytime I'm talking to people and they're expressing that they want to, um, hey, girl, it's all good. So <laughs> I'm glad you're here right now. Um, anytime people can like that, that express an interest in wanting to gain more visibility, get their message out there in front of uh, different audiences, if I, and I know what they want to talk about, I know what 
audience they want to get in front of. I will pass this uh, guy's list on, like if I get the email and then it seems that, you know, so-and-so has a podcast opportunity and, and Sally, you know, Sue that I talked to last week expressed an interest in being on that type of podcast show. Uh, guess what I'm doing? I'm hooking Sally up with that, um, that information on how to get onto that show. And she's got to do the work. I'm not going to like actually fill out the form for her, but I've done my due diligence and connected the dots. So if that means that you have information on um, maybe an upcoming conference like or some sort of opportunity where you can um, share a resource, share value, put another connection into somebody's like quiver, if you will, then you can actually appear more valuable. That, my friends, will keep you more top of mind. That will keep you more engaged with what else is going on in the community as opposed to, and, and, and community, when I say community, I mean that pretty vaguely. I mean that um, because not everybody is going to want to stick to a local community. Sometimes you want to broaden your horizons and reach out on a more regional level. Like I'm doing that in February. I'm actually, um, I live in the Southwest Florida market, but I'm taking my, my workshop series that I launched in 2017 in the Southwest Florida market. And I'm, I, I've created enough no like and trust factor in the Tampa Bay market. Um, not at the level that I'm in Southwest Florida by any stretch of the imagination, because I've been in Southwest Florida for 13 years now. And I think I've only been in Tampa like two and a half. Let's just get real. And thank you for all those loves and, and, and the engagement on that, Nicole. But, and Nicole's going to be there at the workshop. But what my point is, like, you can take what you already have and you can actually um, duplicate it in another market. So if that's a goal of yours, then figure out, well, are, are there other partnerships that I can identify with? Are there other things that I can do for other people in that market to not only um, support them, which should be your first goal, um, especially if you're providing value to other people, let's just be real. Okay. Your goal is to not anticipate that you're going to get something out of it for yourself. But by default, if you start providing value to other people, that will come back to you. I promise it may not come back to the direct from the direct source. Like you may put all this time and energy into providing value to one particular person, but not to get like wooey about this, but the universe is kind of watching what's going down. If you're taking action, if you're showing up, you're being valuable. Um, again, it may not show back up to you um, from that particular source. However, it will start showing up in other really cool, magical, listical ways. And again, I don't want to get all wooey about that and, you know, like rainbows and sunshine. However, like I just know in my experience when I, when I am in that activity of providing value for people and just truly providing value without a freaking agenda, it does come back to me. Okay. Um, let's see what else is on my point today. Oh, okay. So if you're doing all of that currently right now, so if you're, you're, you know, your target market, you know who's already talking to them and you're building relationships with them. You are finding those, like you're finding those pockets of people like in the different, um, you know, trade associations or um, conferences that might be like getting all those people to one area. Um, you're providing a ton of value, but you're still not getting what you want. Like you're still <laughs> not getting um, the things that you want to accomplish or you're still not getting in front of those ideal customers clients and, and whatnot. I want you to do, this is a little bonus assignment that I want to, and, and in fact, all of this, everything that I just mentioned up to this point is totally something that you want to do as a bonus. I don't want you to think that because we're talking about it right now, um, that I'm bringing it to your attention, but then you don't actually do the work. You don't actually like answer the questions for yourself. I want you to still do that. And that's why um, Fernando's been so gracious to actually put the comments in the, in the section tonight <laughs> or in the comment section, I should say, because I want you to go back and I want you to do like physically write out on paper. What is it that you, um, how do you answer all those questions for you specifically? Um, so the last question I have for you tonight, and, and this is actually like probably it can be very easy to figure out or it can be very challenging uh, to figure out because if it's challenging, chances are you're in denial about it. But if it comes really easy, um, then you're at least aware and that, that's the first part of this whole thing. But we have to know why we're, we're not getting in front of those people. We have to know why we're not getting what we want. We have to know why we might not be achieving the results that we desire. 
So if you're in any one of those boats where you're like, okay, look, I, 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 I may be doing all these things or I may not be doing all those things and this is why I'm not getting what I want. I was listening to another thought leader today and she was talking about how like we, if we in, in any aspect of our visibility, our business, our growth, our achievement, like if we're not getting what we want, chances are it's because we're not taking action. We're not doing the things that we need to do in order to, or what we want to do. Let's, I mean, let's face it. I mean, there, there might be things that you actually want to do. That's why I opened up this live stream tonight with saying, you know, gosh, you might have had things on your list of wanting to accomplish X, Y, Z or ABC in 2018. But here you are 28 days into the new year as we record this today, 29 days, I digress, 29 days into the new year. And you're like, um, I haven't been able to achieve like anything on my to-do list yet. And I'm already one twelfth of the way into the new year. So I'd be getting really clear about why you're not achieving the results that you desire. Is it because you're not taking action? Is it because the people, maybe the, 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 the target market that you thought you wanted to serve, and this is actually a hard blow for some of you on here tonight, but maybe the target market that you additionally wanted to serve, like maybe there's no interest in your product or service for that particular target market, okay? Like you see a need for it, like you have that vision and say, oh gosh, you know, like that, that, that industry or that group of people totally need my product or service. But if you haven't done anything to establish like any authority in that space, if you haven't like done some um, research on that particular target, um, if you haven't identified like what's keeping them up at night. So if you haven't identified the things that they need solutions to, even if you have the greatest like invention on the planet, and even if your, your service is just, like a rock solid and you have like this um, unique selling proposition behind your service or your product, like it's not going to make a bit of difference, okay? And my one of my mentors and uh, this gentleman by the name of Ken Courtright, I, I reference him in a number of other videos and podcasts that I've done in the past. But one of the things that he says is that we've got to make ourselves the most attractive bait in the river of fish that are actually swim, the, the, and, and, and we call our clients fish, right? So like, I don't, I'm not a fisherman. My husband loves to fish, but um, there's certain bait. Like if you know anything about fishing, there's certain bait that's more attractive to certain fish, right? So if you have a piece of bait that is going to attract, um, I don't know, snapper, <laughs> okay? Um, and but that the, the the bait that you have is only going to attract catfish, okay? That would be like a problem number one, right? Like. The, so if you've got bait that's attracting catfish, uh, indicatively like the bottom feeders of the waters, okay, and I, every once in a while I love a good piece of catfish, okay, so <laughs> nothing against catfish, but um, for all my southern friends out there, I love catfish. Um, so <laughs> how did this go like to food really, really fast? I don't know how this happened. I had no idea that we were going to plan this particular scenario, but you know what I mean, right? So if you have bait that's going to like attract one particular line of fish or a, a, a species of fish, but it, um, but it, it's going the opposite direction, that could be one problem. Or let's say you have um, the bait, um, let's put it in this perspective. Let's say that you're wanting to fish for um, things in a freshwater canal, but then you're going into saltwater. Okay, like I can identify with that being in Southwest Florida, there's saltwater and freshwater canals all around me. Same scenario, like you're not going to get the results that you want. So you have to make sure that whatever you're doing to uh, attract your ideal client, um, you're positioning yourself in the, in the streams, if you will, of where those people are hanging out. Because nothing's more frustrating than saying a message, talking a message, um, offering value when people don't give a damn, you know, when they just, it doesn't mean anything to them and they're never going to convert. They're never going to turn into customers. Um, so you want to be mindful of that. Um, that goes for speaking too. in my inspired businesswoman group tonight, we actually had a really engaging conversation 
Um, and thanks for that, Nicole. Absolutely. Um, we had a really engaging conversation tonight around how um, people are, um, what are they doing to speak? How are they um, positioning themselves to, to build authority or influence through speaking engagements? And um, there were a lot of really interesting uh, topics and a lot of interesting um, I guess topics, if you will, I don't have to repeat myself on that, that were coming up in the newsfeed in that conversation. And it was just so fascinating to me because simple things, right? Like simple audiences, like I was like, well, hey, have you thought about this? Or what are your specific goals on this? It was fascinating to see like how people, even though they live, breathe and die, um, maybe those opportunities in their industry, like some of them were not necessarily aware of the, the, some of the things that I was throwing their way. And I'm not saying that to toot, you know, toot my own horn or pat myself on the back, but this whole element of being visible, sometimes it means that you got to talk to other people, to get outside of your own way, to get outside of your own headspace, um, to get out of your metaphoric forest, if you will. I refer to uh, people being in their own forest a lot of times because we are maybe stuck behind a big gigantic tree and we can't necessarily see the the stream that we can like hop into a canoe and take that stream down to exactly where we need to go sometimes we're in our own forest we can't see through the trees so if that's your case it's always helpful to chime in with other professional peers I highly recommend if you're going to go down that route that you make sure that you identify with people that are already doing the things that you want to do. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily be talking to people that like have no interest in ever speaking or ever being more visible in their business or ever doing anything to really stretch themselves and challenge themselves because you're going to fall into that trap of, well, like that person that I'm seeking advice from they're not going to like, they're not moving the needle in their own business. How the heck are they going to move the needle in mine or, or add value to what I'm doing and vice versa? How can I contribute to, to the conversation in their world either? So it's very helpful to understand from, from your point of view, like, well, what are the things that I need to do? How can I get in front of other people that can support my ideas, support, uh, su support, not support, what the heck, support, like, um, like my initiatives, but more importantly, understand how you can support their initiatives as well too. How can you tap into that vision? So here's um, here's some other things that I want you to be thinking about. Now, I, th these aren't things that I like are necessarily like formed entirely yet. Um, if you have, and I'll be sure to put this in the comment section uh, once I get off here, unless somebody wants to be a lamb chop and go to, um, actually, you know what? I think I might be able to do it while I've got, I should have just done this. I should have just done this before I hopped on here and then I would have had it copied and pasted into the chat box and then you all would have been able to like not have to deal with me doing what I'm about ready to do right the second. Um, so I actually, not too long ago, I actually wrote this piece and it's called, um, let me just put it in here so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Um, ta-da. Okay, let's see if this will work. Now it looks like, it looks really bad right now. Some of you, oh, ta-da. Okay, there it is. Okay, so it's eight different strategies on how to get in front of your ideal client. I actually wrote this piece last summer. Um, and it's a very, like, robust piece. There's a lot of information in there. There's lots of ways um, that I, I tonight, I, I promised that this was going to be, like, a high, high, high level view of how to get more visible. But in this article that I just shared in the comment section, these are actual um, – like strategies, if you will. I talked about ways. I talked about some questions that you want to ask yourself tonight. But in the article on the eight strategies to get your message in front of your ideal clients, that, my friends, is going to teach you or talk about, maybe not teach you, teach you, but it's going to give you some, some um, perspective on what you could be doing um, strategy-wise, right? Like the tactical side. Hey, Pamela, how are you? The tactical side of how you can get um, like, like, like that message, i.e. visibility, i.e. getting your message in front of more people, like those are ways that you can actually do it. And so some of you who are on here right now, you probably have even read the article. 
Um, if you have, awesome, reread it again, because I'm a firm believer that sometimes I don't necessarily catch, uh, especially in a meaty article like this one, because I literally like carve out um, in great detail um, these eight ways I break down some of the, and I give you all bonus assignments for each one, so it's kind of a cool article. But you might have not caught all the things that you were supposed to catch um, in the article the first time around. So I invite you to, to if you haven't read it, read it. If you have read it, reread it again. And if you've read it or you're, you're going to read it, um, if you could share that with people in your professional circles, especially those that are in a service industry, um, professional service industry, you know, so like your um, consultants, coaches, attorneys, realtors, um, you know, CPAs, insurance, banking, anybody that's in a professional service industry, web developers, um, C-level executives who are running organizations that want to help their sales teams be more productive and more visible in their efforts. Uh, that would be super, I'd be super grateful and super humble if you could share that with your communities and let people know, um, you know, your most impactful takeaway. Because I feel like in this visibility space, um, and there's actually some other things, uh, other training I'm going to be doing on this in the next uh, few days around helping leaders like yourself get more visible in your market space because it really does um, at the end of the day we can talk about the tactics but if we're not doing anything to really um, oh let's see here what's Nicole have to say yes absolutely absolutely um, I wholeheartedly agree Nicole um, if we're if we're like doing those things to really position ourselves from a place of authority, from a place of service, from a place of um, love and support for other people um, inside of our industry, people that we want to align ourselves with, it just makes everything look more. Um, from your perspective, it, it positions you from a place of value and support and service. So um, that's why I share so many resources because it's like, you know, these are things that have shaped me. These are things that have shaped other, my clients. These are things that have shaped uh, peer groups or, or other organizations like audience members within the organizations that I've spoken to. And when the light bulb goes off, um, I know that it's a hit and that's why I do my best to share those resources with you all because if, if, if I can grow from it and I can share it with you all and then vice versa, like if you're tapped into other resources, other um, tools and tips that could be valuable to um, you know, the people that you serve and the people beyond your audience, uh, that's always a win. And of course, I love looking at what you all are doing because I might not necessarily, I mean, hello, I'm only human. Um, I don't have access to everything and I'm always open to learning new resources and opportunities to grow and develop, um, not only for myself, but also for the clients that I serve. So it's always cool to kind of share this back and forth. So I want to hear from you all. Hey, Brian, how are you, love? Good to see you. Um, so I want to hear from you all. There's, uh, I know I went over a little bit. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. I, I kind of forgot that I, that I titled this the way I titled it. I just want to plant this little seed. Like this is a teeny tiny seed. Um, my husband and I actually have come up with a really cool training, like super, super duper cool training. Um, and I don't know when the heck we're going to find the time to do it. I want to, I wanted to do it like yesterday. Um, but yesterday was, as we're recording this yesterday, I was in New Orleans. Uh, so that wouldn't have worked out so well. I guess I could have done it in the airport, but that probably wouldn't have been my best move because of all the chatter and the commotion inside of airports. But, um, but the epic aspect, and this is actually, um, cool because we're doing the epic game plan event in, uh, the Tampa Bay area on the 21st of February. But, um, that's not, that wasn't the, the, a seed for that program per se. But this free training, I, and I, again, I, my husband and I haven't quite decided how we're going to conduct this yet, but we are going to be doing some free training on, um, what we call epic. Um, EPIC uh, is, is a, it's an acronym, it's really cool, it's super exciting, and it's going to help people really connect the dots as it relates to gaining more visibility, gaining more market shares, being more productive in their industry. So um, my current clients, I've already kind of shared, shared some of that with you all. Um, a few of you are joining me uh, <laughs> from, uh, a few of you, my, my current clients are actually on here tonight, I'm very grateful for that. But 
um, to the rest of the world. Uh, we are going to be rolling that out in hopefully the next few weeks. Uh, we just want to make sure that we've got all of our ducks in a row on our end to make sure that we're providing the best value, the best resources for you all in that free training. So what I need from you on that front and that, and that uh, pivot there for a moment is I need to hear from you. I need to hear what is it about your current sales efforts, your current visibility efforts, your current uh, putting your best foot forward efforts as it relates to growing your business, growing your visibility in your industry. What are your biggest questions? What are your biggest concerns right now? Uh, what are the, the biggest challenges you're having uh, as it relates to getting in front of more of your ideal customers and ideal referral partners? Put those things in the comment section of this live stream you could certainly private message me as well too, but here's what I want to encourage you to do. Put it in the chat box because I want to answer those questions prior to the training, right? I wanna do, do, do my best to get a jump start on it now. Chances are, if you have a question, other people do too, right? So we wanna be sure that you are not hoarding our questions and, and you could certainly message me if it's really meaty. Um, I can't imagine something being super meaty on the visibility front, like if it had something to do with you personally, totally different story. Um, but if you have an issue with being more visible in your market space, and you want to put it in the chat box, like I said, as it relates to this free training that my husband and I are gonna be rolling out, or myself, I can't figure it out, we haven't figured it out yet, um, but we will. And uh, as soon as we do, I will let you know what that looks like so you can get a jump start on getting that training uh, before the rest of the world gets it, which is super cool. Um, but put those com comments, questions in the chat box of this live stream tonight uh, so that way I can do my due diligence, answer those questions in the best way I can. And then, uh, again, you know, if other people have those questions that we're killing two birds with one stone, I hate to say that expression, but for lack of better expression, I'm going to say it. Um, this will give us more of that sense of community and that's what it's really all about right providing value providing community and helping you get more visible in your industry starting with this live stream and some other cool things that we're rolling out so uh, without further ado I, I, I want to respect all your time we've been on here for 41 minutes I thank you I honor each one of you if you have specific questions again put them in the chat box so we can continue the conversation and again uh, check out the eight strategies to get your message in front of your ideal clients. I want to hear your feedback. You can put that in the comments as well, too. I want to hear your feedback on what was your biggest impactful takeaway. And do me a favor, hook a sister up, share that article with other professionals who could totally use that information because it is very robust. It's very awesome. And um, I'm hoping to create more content pieces around uh, how to express yourself and create more visibility and uh, take more of that market share for what you're doing in your own industry. So again, you guys rock. Thanks for hanging out with me on this lovely Monday night. Until next time, I'm Erica Kastner. Y'all take care. Bye.